I'd like to call the 24th regular meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council to order. It's great to see so many people here. First of all, we do not allow any signs in council chambers, so please do not display any signs during the meeting. That means you and back, please put the sign down and keep it there. Uh, you know, we, we want to have a good frank exchange tonight, and we thank everybody for your attendance and your interest in the agenda this evening. Next, I'd like to turn it over to our city clerk for the quote of the day. Thanks, Mayor. Teamwork. Cooperation or combined effort of a group of persons working together as a team for a common cause. Thank you very much for that. Next, uh, we'll take the roll call. Uh, there are 15 present. Uh, Alderman Rosemary Trester is uh, missing and is excused. Next, we'll move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next, we'll move on to uh, approval of the minutes from our previous council meeting. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move approval of the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. There will be no resignations or mayor's appointments this evening. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. Yes, we have five people this evening. Um, first on the list is Rachel Laborde. Is that correct? I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. <laughs> okay, Rachel, you want to come right up here to the podium, please? And if you want to get the mic so that people can hear you, that would be great. Okay. And then I just need your uh, home address, please. Do I ha can I give it just to you, or do I need to tell everybody? <laughs> hey, you got to tell everybody. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Don't forget. <laughs> 2440 Carmen Avenue. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay. Um, good evening. My name is Attorney Rachel Laborde, and I am a local attorney in town with Caney Cottle Pesquale and Associates. I practice primarily... In family law, however, I do have an interest in immigration law, and I'm here tonight to base my opinion or state my opinion in regards to Resolution 200 that has been put forth. <coughs> Based off of statements made to the media, it's my understanding, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name wrong, but Mr. Hussein Housey's motivation in proposing this resolution is in response to Donald Trump's executive order that threatens to limit federal funding for sanctuary cities. And that this resolution is simply directing local law enforcement to quote unquote follow federal law. <coughs> First, I think that this resolution is unconstitutional and illegal for several reasons. The Immigration and Nationalization Act 287G specifically states that States are allowed to enter into agreements with the United States Attorney General for immigration purposes or promoting immigration purposes, but it also makes expressly clear that states are not required to enter into agreements or required to participate with federal government in enforcing immigration policy. Resolution, directs, Resolution 200 directs that law enforcement have to obey federal law in relation to immigration detention. This is in direct con contradiction to the existing federal law. Local and state agencies are not required to cooperate with federal immigration entities. Second, President Trump's executive order limiting federal funding for sanctuary cities is far from being actionable and is not a real threat to our federal funding in Sheboygan. <coughs> Similar to the Immigration and Naturalization Act, 287, the 10th Amendment bars the federal government from forcing non-federal ent entities such as local law enforcement to, 
such as local law enforcement, to do their bidding. This was confirmed by the Supreme Court in its opinion striking down the Brady Bill that sought to require local law enforcement officials to oversee local gun sales, such as registration and background checks on those sales. In addition to the Tenth Amendment and the Immigration and Naturalization Act, the INA, the Taxing and Spending Clause of the U.S. Constitution sets forth a three-pronged test before the federal government can even restrict funding. The first being that the amount withheld must be reasonable. And the Supreme Court has set precedent that 5% is a reasonable amount in previous cases, meaning that the federal government could not restrict more than 5% of related federal funding. The second prong of the test requires that the threat to restrict funds must be germane to the condition the government is trying to, to satisfy. For example, President Trump cannot restrict federal housing money to try to get states to enforce immigration laws as the two are not related. Matter of fact, many legal analysis analysts have stated that the only area that funds can be restricted from would be funds the law enforcement entities receive. However, the executive order expressly states that federal funds directed to local law enforcement agencies will not be restricted if noncompliance is exhibited. Third, there has to be specific reference in, to the restricted funding, funding in legislation passed by Congress, meaning an executive order alone could not restrict funds. Congress has to pass legislation restricting the funds. While these are all issues with the executive order in and of itself, the reality is we have to look at what exposure, if any, Sheboygan has. From my perspective, Sheboygan has zero risk of losing federal funding, and this resolution is a blatant, blatant attempt to thrust our community into fear. If we assume for a second that one Congress actually enacts funding legislation that incorporates the executive order, and two, that the executive order is actually constitutional, Sheboygan is not listed on any list as a sanctuary city. The only counties in the state of Wisconsin that are considered sanctuary counties are Milwaukee and Madison, and those statuses are debatable. So even if the executive order is enacted and enforced, Sheboygan would not be at the risk of losing federal funding as it does not meet the requirements of being labeled a sanctuary city. This resolution is seeking to solve a problem we do not and will not have. Further, Mr. Halsey has stated in an immediate interview that if you do nothing wrong, you have nothing to worry about. However, the resolution put forth does state that police should take into custody anyone who cannot prove citizenship or legal status that they encounter in their normal course of business. Excuse me, Rebecca. I'm sorry, Rachel. Yep. Your time is up. I'm sorry. Well, can I finish my last sentence? Please go ahead. Okay. By stating that it would be just in the normal course of business, this undermines other immigration proposals that encourage undocumented individuals to come forward with information on crimes that give those individuals, um, given that those individuals would be fearful of detention and removal if speaking with an officer at all. Thank you for your time and asking for, the common, asking for our aldermen and common council to vote no on resolution 200. Thank you, Rachel. <clears throat> Excuse me, next on the list is Jose Arujo. <coughs> Jose, can I get your home address, please? 2918 South 9th Street. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor Vanderstein, council members, community members. I'm here to express my and what I believe to be most of our uh, strong op opposition against resolution number 200 presented by Alderman uh, Jose to the Public Protection and Safety Committee and being presented to the Common Council tonight. It's Jose. That's what Can he you said. pronounce my last name? No, my last name is pronounced Jose. I understand. I'm sorry. He has the floor. The resolution presented by Alderman Jose is not only unnecessary but also irresponsible for the following reasons. If safety is the main goal of the resolution, we will achieve exactly the opposite. From the perspective of the, of the police department, this resolution will open the opportunity for allegations of racial profiling and discrimination claims. From the community perspective, 
if this resolution is approved, people from minority groups will hesitate to report illegal activity and crimes, which in turn will increase illegal activity as perpetrators will quickly, will quickly figure out their, their ability to commit crimes without consequences. In either situation, our police department will be presented with unnecessary challenges and erase everything that they, they have done to accomplish by them with their community policing strategy. Second, Alderman Hussein asks the Sheboygan Police Department to detain, quote, undocumented individuals who cannot provide proof of citizenship. I would like to bring to your attention that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of individuals living in Sheboygan that contribute to our economy every day that are in this country legally but are not U.S. citizens. This is a case of individuals that hold permanent residency, that are here on work visas, refugees, international students, and so forth. I ask, how are these individuals able to prove their citizenship status if they don't have one? Furthermore, how is it that a U.S. citizen proof their citizenship status? This can only be done by showing either a birth certificate, a passport, or a naturalization certificate. I ask you, do we carry those on a regular basis in our packets? I don't. Do you? Again, this resolution has not considered these circumstances and is very narrow in, in its narrative. Number three, the unemployment rate in Sheboygan County is under 4% which is the lowest it has been in many, many years. Local companies, the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce and the Sheboygan Economic Development Corporation are working really hard and in investing resources to bring people to Sheboygan to fill these jobs that are currently going unfilled. And keeping our companies from growing and staying competitive in a global economy. By even considering this resolution, we risk putting all this work in jeopardy. Progressive professionals and qualified individuals will view Sheboygan as an unwelcoming community, which we are not, and will consider other communities as an option. Again, because of these three reasons and many more, I strongly oppose this resolution, and I ask you to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Next on our list is Brett Drews. Would Brett be here? Okay. And applause is out of order. Please restrain yourself. And Brett, if you want to get the microphone so we can all hear you. And I just need your home address. That, right there? Is that good? That's good. Uh, home address, uh, 1221 North 4th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, uh, I would like to speak in favor of passing Resolution 200. Um, I, I, uh, right now, I think there's a lot of uh, uncertainty in our community, and we need to reassure our immigrant population that our city will not be knocking on doors and checking papers, but we will cooperate with federal law enforcement when required and abide by the pending state law that's working its way to the governor's desk right now. Uh, Assembly Bill 127 uh, prescribes fines of up to $5,000 per day for cities that uh, don't participate and cooperate with uh, law, local law enforcement immigration. Assembly's already passed it. It's working its way through the Senate. I don't expect that yeah, it's going to see much opposition given the current state of our government. Um, the president has said felons and not families, criminals and not children. The absence of clarity makes for speculation. Speculation often brings suspicion and fear. If we don't tell our immigrant population that if they haven't committed a crime, they have nothing to fear from our local, local law enforcement, then we will see them driven further into the shadows and be victims of the very criminals that we all want to protect our community from. 
we need to be clear to the chief and his officers what their duties are on this issue. Otherwise, we are putting them in the possible position of being at the center of a conflict with the federal or state governments, potentially jeopardizing the city's vital federal funding or incurring fines from the state. Decisions with potentially this significant of a consequence should not be left to the interpretation and certainly shouldn't be the concern of a beat officer or even the chief. We need to provide some clarity on this issue. Uh, with all deference to the attorney who spoke earlier, um, I, I'm old enough to remember when Wisconsin was the last state that had the 18-year-old drinking age because Ronald Reagan threatened to pull our federal funding from us on the, on the highways. So it can be done and it has been done and it works very effectively. Um, the bill, uh, let's see, yeah, you know, Miami-Dade County has passed resolutions like this. <coughs> well, you can hear from outside. These people think we're looking to round people up and, you know, ship them out. That's not what this is about. Criminals should be gone. President Obama said it. President Trump has said it. And I think the city should be clear on, you know, where we stand <coughs> as far as, uh, you know, what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. And I don't need any more time. Thank you, Thank you Brett. Uh, next on the list is Anna DeSant. Is that correct, Anna? I thought I wasn't sure if there was an O at the end. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> and if you want to make sure the mic is okay for you before you start. And I just you need your me? home address, okay. please. Yeah, that is okay. All right. Your home address, please. 3807 South 14th Street in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, and let me stop the other one and let's get you started here. All right, you will have five minutes. Good evening, Mayor Alderman and Alderwomen and Common Council. My name is Anna DeSantos, and I stand here in front of you with my heart in my hands, which I place in yours. I am here to plead with you as a parent not to pass or accept Resolution 200. I have personally been deeply affected by immigration. In 1979, I became pregnant. My unborn child's father had a great paying job at the Kohler Company. He was prepared to marry me, to take care of us. Unfortunately, he was not allowed to do that. When she was six months old, he was deported. The ghost of not having her father has caused her so much trauma, so much emptiness, so much pain. My daughter turned to drugs to soothe herself. I am not saying that every child will go down that same road that she did. If their parents are obtained and deported, you know, our families could be next. We live in an uncertain world. And, you know, just remember it takes two, takes two parents to raise a child nowadays. I just ask you, why? Why give that ripple effect more strength to carry on? It will only cause more trauma, more pain, more suffering for another family. Is Resolution 200 really necessary? Let's put Sheboygan on the map. Let's be united and truly live up to a campaign Sheboygan had many, many years ago, which was, it takes a village to raise a child. If a child born in the United States of America is separated from their parents just because their parents don't have the necessary documents, where are the rights of these poor, innocent children? These are American citizens. These children belong in the United States of America. Let's wipe out the Resolution 200 and find a solution in 2017. Only you are able, capable of not accepting Resolution 200. I do hope and pray you are willing to do so. Immigrations have always been in effect. They have never been enforced. There is a difference. 
I have spoken to a few officer friends. They don't want to do this. They, are, they understand that they are hardworking people that don't have a criminal record. Do we really want our jails filled with speeders, people driving without license? Let's put Sheboygan in the media for having a solution in 2017. And thank you for your time, and God bless each and every one of us. Thank, thank you, you, Anna. Next on the list will be Bob Heck. Bob, are you, Bob, would you come up to the front, please? Good evening. I'm Can I Bob. have your home address, Bob? 1720 Elm Avenue in Sheboygan. And you will have, hold on, let me, five minutes. Okay. I've come here tonight uh, to speak on a couple topics if I have time. The first one is uh, Resolution 200, which I support. We are a nation of laws. We may not like all the federal laws, but that doesn't give us a right to ignore them and to disregard them and not to follow them. Uh, because if we do that, then what good are our laws? People who have come here illegally are breaking our laws. This resolution doesn't talk about us seeking these people out actively and deporting them. It simply says that if our police department comes into contact with an individual that is here illegally and they've committed a crime, that they're held and turned over to federal authorities. That's how I read it. And I think that's what we should do. We should support federal law. We don't have the option not to support federal voting laws, for example. City wouldn't get away with that. There's a lot of laws that we may not like. There are laws I don't like. But I recognize that in a nation of laws, it is the laws that make us a civil society. And simply because we don't like a law doesn't mean we should openly disregard it. My next topic has to do, a totally different topic, has to do with the Sheboygan Armory. I've been to uh, council meetings regularly lately, and uh, the uh, Sheboygan Army came up last time, and there were nine aldermen here who voted against seeking bids to tear the armory down. The armory is in awful shape. I've grown up here. I know that the Army has historical value. People have attachment to it. But I think the ship has sailed, folks. To speaking to the aldermen, I think it's time to tear the Armory down. Several year, a couple years ago, the Boston store was an abandoned building. It was vacant. The city spent a million dollars, according to an article in November of 2015, I read in the Sheboygan Press, they spent a million dollars to buy the site tear down the Boston store, rehab the site. They then sold it for $20 to the folks that are building the apartments. The reason the Common Council did it, that is they didn't want a blighted building downtown. Well, we currently have a blighted building on the corner of Broughton Drive and Penn Avenue, and it's time to tear it down. And it's time to raise it and put something else there. Because there's nothing left, folks, based on what I've heard. That's worth saving inside. It's just going to get moldy and gross and awful. So, and, and, and closing our eyes and putting it off isn't going to make it better. So I would hope that in the future we, we've got to do something down there. Um, it's a wonderful piece of property. We could do a lot of wonderful things down there. And I hope that we can find something great to do down there, but we can do that in a brand new building. Because all that's really left down there are the four walls. The roof is shot. There's water all over. I don't know how you save anything on the inside there. So those are the two matters I wanted to address. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. That's it for public forum. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to uh, bring forward uh, item 6.6, .6, if there's no objection from the council. <clears throat> Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to file. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to file. Under discussion, Alderperson Jose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I'd like to make a motion. Uh, I'd like to amend the the uh, six point six. I'd like to make a motion to pass the resolution. No, that's not on the floor. I'm sorry, you can't do that. There's a motion on the floor. Right, there's a motion on the floor. The motion's already on the floor. You can't make another motion. Well, then I want to make have clarification. What happens if if we vote if a vote of yes on this is to do nothing? Does a vote of no pass the resolution? I'll defer to our assistant city attorney, Rose Simon Silva. Alderman Jose, the motion and the second was to file this document. So um, the di discussion right now is relating to whether to file the document. If that motion fails, there could be an, an additional. Then a motion could be brought. Is that I'd, correct? Yes. But at this point, the discussion is whether to file or whether not to file. Okay. That's fine. I have some discussion then. Um, first, I want to clarify a few things. Um, uh, the first media person I was contacted by last Thursday tried to put a spin on this. Um, I heard it called the hate resolution. Uh, I want to first point out that I have Latino heritage. On my father's side, one-third of my cousins are of Mexican heritage. On my mother's side, one-third of my cousins are of Mexican heritage. When this meeting opened, I was the only person here that said the Pledge of Allegiance in Spanish. Uh, and in fact, my father changed his name from an Irish sounding name by hyphenating it and added an E on the end. He changed it to be pronounced Jose. And in fact, that was the name of his business corporation, J-O-S-E, Jose Incorporated. Um, this resolution is not unlike the resolution that Alderman Bellinger brought forth and we passed as a council last year sanctioning the county board when they brought forth a county sales tax which when all those Sheboygan citizens pay 50 percent of the tax we are only going to get back nine percent that resolution was a statement it has no actual weight in and, and and any effect on what the county board has done and their ability to pass a county sales tax. This resolution is simply a clarification statement to the police asking them to do what they're already expected to do and that is to follow the law. We are not, The resolution does not ask them to go door to door. It simply asks them when in the normal performance of their duties they come across somebody that can't provide identification and as they go down that, that process, they cannot prove that they are here legally, either as a citizen or on a work visa or something of that nature, that they hold that person and follow federal law and turn them over to immigration or Homeland Security. Any alderman, a, vo a yes vote tonight is to follow the Public Protection and Safety Committee's recommendation and to file this resolution. A no vote would be to not take the recommendation and then the motion could be brought forth to pass the resolution. <coughs> Let me make it clear, there are three things you are doing as an alderman and, and to the public listening at home, let me make it clear. If an alderman votes yes to pass the recommendation of the Public Protection and Safety Committee, and you just file this, the, the, that older person is doing three things. First, they're saying that federal grant money doesn't concern them. That if we lose our federal grant money, they're okay if the city has to raise fees and taxes in one manner or another in order to replace that federal money. If they vote no, or pardon me, if they vote yes and take the Public Protection Committee's recommendation, and file this resolution instead of us having the ability to pass it. They're saying they don't care if they have to raise your taxes and fees. Any older person that votes yes to just file this resolution rather than passing it is saying that they do not have any respect for the law. As Mr. Heck said during his presentation, it's time to speak. We are a nation of laws. The opposite of law and order is chaos. It, a vote of yes to simply file this means you do not respect the law. 
And finally, a vote of yes to file this resolution versus the, have given us the ability to pass it means that you as an older person do not have any respect for your friends and family that did things the right way and came here legally, that filed the papers, that waited out the time, and when the time came, took their citizenship exam and lawfully and legally, through the right channels, time and procedure, <coughs> became citizens of the United States. If you vote yes to file this resolution versus giving us the opportunity to, to vote and pass the resolution, then you are saying that you have a low opinion of your friends and family that did it the right way. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Wolf. And uh, just so you know that the uh, board wasn't on and working, so if you buzzed in before, please buzz in again. Thank you, Mayor. Um, although I don't agree with all of um, Alderperson Jose's uh, comments, it's nice to actually hear how he feels that we believe that we're uh, voting and how we, how we believe in things. Um, I don't believe that this is this, the, uh, the, uh, the council's need to actually pass, um, to pass this because we have a great police department. We have a great um, chief that follows the state and federal uh, rules and there is no reason for us to have to tell the police department how to do what they already do a very good job at. It's not our place. It shouldn't be our place. And I recommend that we vote uh, to file this. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> well, there have been a fair number of things here that have greatly upset me. Alderman Jose, your imputation of my understanding of the law, my duty as a, citizen, as a citizen of this country, my duty to this city to make sure that we are not in violation of federal laws is so far off base, I don't even know where to start. But here's where I am going to start. I am deeply disturbed that this resolution brings our city council into partisan politics. Now, I'm going to be starting my sixth year on the council next April, and really never in that time have we on this council talked about partisan politics or involved ourselves. Now, I know, even though I've not asked any of you explicitly about how you vote or what your political thoughts are, I have a sense, you know, over the years as, you know, we talk back and forth. But never have we involved the city in partisan political activity, and Alderman Jose has done that with his resolution. So right now, what I am suggesting is that the primary reason to file this is because it involves the city improperly in partisan politics. If this resolution does not say anything about sanctuary cities, we, we aren't going to become a sanctuary city if we don't pass this resolution. This is a, a fractured world these days, but in the city council, we get together and we talk about city business and we do a good job of it. Now, we are not, uh, and one of the things that I'm going to ask if, if Chief Domogoski is here, that we open up the, uh, the floor to him to uh, explain police practices and so forth. We are not in violation of federal law. We are not taking steps to have our federal funding cut. That is just simply not true. And for people to come, for, for Alderman Jose to come forward with these kinds of matters is really deeply disturbing. His resolution is not as um, uh, neutral as he might make it seem. For example, I don't know if any of you ever traveled in a foreign country. If we have tourists here who get involved in a car accident, they get picked up and they get taken to the police station because they can't prove that they are U.S. citizens under Alderman Jose's resolution. So you need to look carefully at that very broad, poorly drafted, unclear, and yet terrifying language that would assert that anybody visiting here is subject to police stop and search and proof of citizenship. I have a passport. I'm lucky. I don't carry it with me every day because I don't want to lose it. But right now, 
Chief Domogoski, I can't prove that I'm a citizen of the United States. Wish I could, but I can't. If I were in a traffic accident, I'm sorry, I can't prove who I am. Now, how would I get even more suspect? If my face were a little darker, or if I wore a hajib, or some other matter that set me apart from being just like everybody else. So what I am saying is that the proper action is to file. I hope we do it expeditiously and that we extend and keep extending a warm welcome to immigrants, to documented and undocumented people who come here seeking a better life and who struggle and want to keep their families together. You are welcome. You are a part of our community and our, the fabric of our community. And I, I, I just want to say that as a council, we can do this. We're better than this. And I, I urge us to file. With that, Mayor, I'm wondering if, if we could uh, suspend the rules and ask the There's chief no to come objection. forward. There's no objection. I'd ask uh, Chief of Police, Chris Domogolski, to come forward. Good evening. Um, the only comments that I would make um, essentially is that none of our federal funding is in, in any jeopardy. We currently follow and cooperate with federal officials. And really the concern that I have about the resolution is it's not based in reality the way that it's written. I can answer questions if you're interested in that. Uh, next is Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I take exception with, with Alderman Jose dragging my name into this, saying that some legislation that I previously introduced to the council is very much similar to this. It is not. It's in no way, shape, or form. I don't endorse this legislation. I'm going to vote to file. Um, and, and, and I regret that my name was you know, being dragged into this in that fashion. Um, in doing so, I've got great respect for the chief for our police department, for our sheriff department, our law enforcement, our immigration officials. I've got great love for my family who, however they got here originally, I'm not sure, but I'm thankful they did and, uh, and I appreciate that. And uh, I am very pleased to see the support that, that the people here that are showing in opposition to this. It's a great grassroots effort. It's uh, obviously something they feel very passionate about and threatened by. And it's not something that we should be, you know, doing. We shouldn't be threatening our citizens uh, with, with rounding them up and, in, in, you know, deporting them or turning them over to ICE or, or to the sheriff or, or to whatever. Um, you know, it's, I find that this be, you know, unfortunate as far as the publicity that's being shed on this community. This is not, you know, what this community is about. This is a great community, a welcoming community in an inclusive community and uh, I regret that uh, we have this before us and, uh, and that my name got dragged into this. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Lewandowski. I just want to say that I will be voting to file this and I feel that it is unfair. It is aimed at one group of people and I'm sure of all of the aldermen in this room right now, if the police would stop us we could not prove that we are here legally. I do not ca carry a copy of my birth certificate around with me, and we're aiming with this resolution to pick out a certain group of people. And some of these people are here legally, some were born in this country, some have come here and become U.S. citizens, and we're going to be harassing them under this ordinance if it passes. And I just want to say that I'm glad that all of these people are here tonight, and I hope that they will take a more active interest in city government in the future because they are an important part of this city. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. <laughs> Other person, Jose. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, so that I have two questions, quick questions for the chief, and then I have some points I want to respond to. Um, first of all, chief, how long have you been the chief? Seven years. Seven years. In that time, how many undocumented individuals has the Sheboygan Police come across? I have no idea. Okay. I would expect probably single digits. 
I have no idea. You don't. You're the chief, and you don't know how many. How many? We come okay. across. I have no idea how many undocumented or illegal uh, immigrants we've come across in the past seven years. Okay. Well, my point is, I I suspect it's a very low number, and again, this is just this is a resolution is not asking the police to change their method of policing in any way or the step up in their efforts of policing, it's just to follow federal law, which I would imagine they are doing anyway. We are. Again, the objection that I would have is that it's not based in reality. And so what I mean by that is that the federal law is very complicated and nuanced. It's not simple. There's criminal violations. There's civil violations. Right now, the federal government has approximately the capacity to detain about 30,000 um, illegal immigrants and there's about 12 million in the country. So to um, follow the, or the resolution as written here would suggest that, that we would round them all up and detain them all. I can call ICE right now. They're not coming. I, I, dis I disagree. The resolution does not call for you to round people up. And as I think it was the third person that spoke tonight, Mr. Drews, as he indicated, one positive thing of passing this resolution is so that they can be safe, sa safe that they can be safe in their thoughts that there is not going to be the Sheboygan police going door to door because the resolution clearly says in the normal way you police things. Again, in the normal way that that you're suggesting, if we come across somebody on a traffic stop, for instance very seldom would, would ICE respond or come when we would check with them. They don't have the capacity to operate in the, in the way you're suggesting by the resolution that we should operate. Okay. Responding to Alderperson Wolf, um, I disagree with him. He said that the, um, the police would, uh, would, are following law, the law, and that is my belief and hope. But Mrs. I think De Los Santos was the one. She said she has talked to at least two police officers that said they will not follow federal law and detain people that they come across that are illegal aliens. Um, going to uh, Alder person uh, um, Mary Lynn Donahue, um, she's the person that made this partisan. All I passed, was pushing to pass is a resolution that seeks to follow the law and nothing more and nothing less. She brought up a whole, other, a whole bunch of different comments one way and the other and made the issue very partisan. One thing I want to let people know is if you've noticed the, our current president, he's not bluffing. He said he was, he said he's going to do certain things and he got into office and he started doing everything that he said he's going to do. You may not believe that he would cut funding. I believe that he would cut funding. So again, a vote to just simply file this resolution. Any older person that does that is saying they don't care if the city of Sheboygan loses federal money. The suggestion that anybody visiting would just be rounded up is ridiculous. Again, you have to be doing something that brings you within the purview of the police. You have to do something that makes you them pull you over or be in a domestic situation that calls them to your residence or to somebody else's residence or somebody's place of business. Uh, nobody is threatened or inhibited from visiting. All you have to do is obey the law. And I would say it's not threatening. Threatening somebody with having to obey the law, that's not a threat. That's your civic duty to obey the law. And if you don't want to obey the laws, you should leave. Finally, I disagree with Alderman Lewandowski's uh, characterization. Nowhere in this resolution is race mentioned. And he said it seeks to seek out one group. It doesn't matter if you're Latino or Canadian or African or you come from Asia. This applies to anybody that's here illegally. It's not just one group of people. Okay, next is Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, when this came to committee, I made the motion to file this document, and I stand by that, and I hope that I have the support of my fellow councilmen. The job of the police department and the fire department is not governed by this body. It is governed by the police, 
and Fire Commission, and we should not be doing the business of that commission. I believe that our police chief and our sheriff are doing what they need to do. I don't think we have any business getting involved in this, and I am going to be continuing my vote to file this, this um, <coughs> resolution. I also want to say that this is not a Republican or a Democratic point of view. I'm an American first, and it has nothing to do with any other politics and kind of resent the fact that that's brought into the arena. So with that being said, I'm not certain I'm within the right authority, but I would like to call the question. Second. Thank you for that motion. Uh, is there any objection to calling the question? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? For the document. Okay, everybody know what they're voting? Would you say it again? Make it clear. Um, right now we have a motion on the floor to file the documents. An I vote would be to file. A no vote would be to not file. Everybody got it? Yes. Would you explain to the people here what file means? It's kind of a government term. Exactly what happens if we file, please? It, it's done. At this point, this document tonight, the one that's in front of you, if it's Um, to file is to, it'll be done. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Okay, everybody got it? Got it. Okay. I don't have anybody. Oh, there we go. Never mind. <laughs> 14 eyes, one no. Motion passes. I'd like to thank everyone for their courtesy and respect tonight. Uh, everybody had a chance to express their point of view, and, uh, and I think the best decision was made this evening. Thank you. Let's have a recess. Five minutes? Five minutes. We'll take a five-minute
convene. Yep. Thank you. Either Daryl, it's just an expansion. Okay. Could everyone please take their seats? Okay, the next item on the agenda is presentations. Um, Chad Pelichek is here to talk about the update on the city's 2016 sustainability initiatives. Chad, the floor is yours. Thank you. So a document in the consent agenda, there's actually two documents that will approve the city's green tier submittal. So the city is part of the green tier charter. You can go to the next slide. <coughs> the green tier charter, which is a collaboration of up to 15 communities on the sustainable initiatives and a lot of what we're going to talk about today is the annual report of the items that have been completed in 2016 and a lot of it is based on the success of the Sheboygan Sustainable Task Force. So in 2014 the city of Sheboygan joined the Green Tier Charter and the charter is a network of Wisconsin communities and counties working collaboratively on community sustainable initiatives. Currently there's 15 cities and counties as part of the charter and it's uh, hosted by the State of Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, the Wisconsin Counties Association, and the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. Each year an annual report needs to be submitted reporting the success from the previous year. Next slide. Next. So the, in 2014, the Common Council accepted the city's sustainability plan, which is really a five-year guide as to how we're going to implement <coughs> sustainable initiatives and how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, each of those, each year similar to the strategic plan, there's uh, initiatives and actions that are to be implemented and are really the gear for what the sust, uh, say, sustainable task force has been working on. So if you go to the next slide. So in 2015, the sustainable task force, a couple of you are members, uh, came up with four goals that they were going to focus their uh, work groups on. The first goal is composting, <coughs> neighborhood composting. The second goal is creating a dedicated website for sustainable issues. The third goal is uh, implementing a rain barrel process where people could buy rain barrels and have rain barrels on their private properties. And the second one is recycling, ed the fourth one is recycling education. So the next slide, um, the farmer's market was a place where they did a number of composting, composting exercises. So they got to uh, talk to about 250 people about the benefits of backyard composting. So this is kind of a double-edged sword in, in Dave Beeble's mind. Um, we would like to see the compost come out of the um, houses and be composted and reused. But we would also see, like to see it if you have a garbage disposal that you would send the stuff down the garbage disposal because it helps out with solids at our wastewater treatment plant. So it's kind of a balance as to what we uh, look at, but uh, about 20% of the waste collected in Sheboygan is food waste. Next slide. So there's a group that worked on a, um, thanks to uh, Alderman Drawn, uh, on a, a website to dedicate to these initiatives as well as education to other people. So that was really the honest of having a separate sustainable website related to Sheboygan issues. So if you're interested, sustainsheboygan.com is the website address and it's got a lot of resources on there, uh, both locally and other kind of national resources. The next slide, um, the rain barrels program. So the task force held a number of open house events at Maywood. Uh, they purchased kits and barrels were donated by the Old Wisconsin Sausage and Rock Line Industries. Um, they put together kits and sold them to interested parties and they will continue to do that this year. So if anyone is interested in the rain barrel to collect water from your downspouts to water your garden or your flower garden or whatever, the um, rain barrel, they sold about 50, I think, or so rain barrels, which is um, kind of, it cuts down on water conservation <coughs> and it's a good, it was a good task and there's be one set up here shortly in City Hall to uh, show people the benefits of the rain barrel system. Recycling education, so we know <coughs> that um, we our waste management collects our garb, we send our garbage to waste management and recycling is free. So under the contract, the more recycling we can do and get people to do 
across the city, the lo less we have in tipping costs. So there's a group at the task force that has gone has gone going out and educating students on recycling. And I know this sounds rudimentary, but when recycling first came out, everybody was doing it, and then we slowly migrated into where we're just throwing it all in the garbage because that's easier. If we whatever we can pull out is savings on the city side, so they uh, decided to go and really participate with the schools and the elementary schools. So they've been to educating about 1,200 students thus far in the Sheboygan Area School District and plan to hit all of the elementary school students by the end of the year and talk about recycling and why it's important to recycle at home, hoping that they would go home and recycle. Next slide. <coughs> Last year we started a blue bag campaign, so uh, we had ordered 5,000 blue bags. We continue to use those for education outreach in the schools. And then this little um, thing you see on the screen, this little graphic is part of the blue bag process in educating people over what can go in blue bags. So <clears throat> the recycling in Sheboygan is really about putting it into the blue bag versus your garbage. This is you know, kind of an interactive approach as to what can be in that bag, and it's been very educational and, and good for people. Next slide. So the council had adopted a resolution accepting $25,500 from the Fund for Lake Michigan, which is a foundation out of Milwaukee um, last year. That money was used with, in partnership with the Sheboygan County YMCA to uh, train all third and seventh graders and bring them to the lakefront. So the, the, the grant was used to bus third and seventh graders from the Sheboygan Area School District to the lakefront and have them participate in two programs, an adopt a beach and adopt a habitat. Of the about 3,000 uh, students that participated in this two and a half month uh, program, 15% of them have said they've never been to the lakefront before, which is amazing to me that they live in a community where we're right on the lake and we've got a beach. And a lot of them in the Grant School District, if you know where that is on the north side, a lot of them were in Grant School and said that they've never been to the lake before. So this was a good exposure, and we're hoping to move that program forward in other years, really just to expose people to what's happening on our lakefront. The next slide, the, uh, another activity was uh, the continuation of LED streetlights. So in 2016, 202 uh, poles were converted to LED. 168 of those lights were based on a grant that the city received from the state for 75000 along Kohler Memorial Drive. So all of the lights from 14th Street to Taylor that were high pressure sodium or that orange light were converted to LED. And there was some other lights on North Avenue. Um, this is about 7,200 a year in energy savings, just these two projects. So it's, it's got some impact, and we continue to uh, work on LED conversions throughout the city. As you know, we've got two housing projects underway for downtown density. So this idea of trying to maximize our space in the downtown and creating additional housing opportunities with 136 apartments currently under construction. <coughs> Uh, last year we had run a trolley that we purchased from the city of Green Bay. So this is now called the Metro Trolley and runs the, a route in the uh, fall in the summer to connect the downtown and the lakefront and the South Pier. So it saw 2,600 participants. Um, realist, ironically, we bought these three trolleys from the city of Green Bay for $8,000, and two ran, one did not run. And Derek just sold the one that didn't run to Kenosha for $5,000. So these two trolleys that run cost us $1,500 each. <laughs> so we are pretty proud of our purchase. <laughs> the last project on here is the Taylor Drive multi-use trail opening. And I had to put a picture of Mayor uh, Ryan riding his bicycle as part ooh, of the dedication. Oh, Mayor Ryan. Oh. Oh. Mayor Vandersteen, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Mayor Vandersteen, sorry. <laughs> Mayor Vandersteen riding his bicycle as part of the grand opening. Um, I just want to preface, and the reason I put this in here is that I've, I continue to hear a lot of comments from the people that they think it's a city-funded project. It is not a city-funded project. It is a project that was funded under the non-motorized transportation program with the county. And yes, it was federal grant dollars, and yes, it was initiative of our federal tax dollars, but it was not city-funded, and there's no city funds in that project. The last project is to highlight is the LED bus light conversion. So 
Derek and the transit identified that um, the Shoreline Metro buses, um, the, they have a problem with headlights and lighting spacing and stuff, so they converted all of the bus lights of 52 buses to um, the new LED lights to give them better visibility in the nighttime, and this was uh, supported with a grant from our insurance provider, Civmic, to assist in the cost of the conversion. So in a nutshell, that's it. There's some other ones in the documents that are in there, but we look forward to uh, you appro uh, approving the annual report as we move sorry, forward, and sorry, Mayor Vanderstein. <laughs> Thanks for that presentation, <laughs> Chad. <laughs> Next, we're moving on to some hearings. Um, the first one is item 2.1, hearing number 17 of 1617, regarding an ordinance repealing and recreating section 15.2. Uh, 915 of the city zoning ordinance as to remove the duties of the housing rehabilitation loan program from the historic preservation commission is there anyone wishing to be heard <coughs> is there anyone wishing to be heard is there anyone wishing to be heard huh. all the person donahue thank you mayor i would move to close the hearing second thank you for that motion and support all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion passes the other hearings I'd like to take is one group. Um, it's a hearing um, number 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 of 1617 for confirming the ex exercise of police power and making an assessment to those benefited properties which assessments are proposed for parking assessment districts number one, <coughs> two, four, and five. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alder Person Lewandowski. I just want to ask for the people who are watching at home, what parking areas are these? These are generally uh, parking lots that are in the downtown area where we uh, have the merchants uh, pay an assessment and they share the cost of operating those lots. So we'll spend money to operate the lots and uh, the revenues are uh, offsetting those and then the remainder is assessed to those merchants. Chad? What the mayor said is absolutely correct. I'll just clarify that parking assessment number one is the downtown and A Street. Parking assessment number two, I believe, is South Pier or oh, Riverfront. And number four is the South Pier. And number five is Heritage Square. Okay. <laughs> Did you catch that? So number one is downtown. Number two is the Riverfront. Number three is Heritage Number four is, we don't have a three. Number four is Heritage Square. Number five is the downtown. And what we do is we assess, as the mayor said, for maintenance. So the parking utility uh, work that they do, that's uh, billed out to the business owners as part of an assessment each year. Okay, is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to close the hearings. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items uh, 3.2 through 3.17. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those items are before us under discussion. Alderperson uh, Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to pull 3.16. I'm not sure how this got in the consent agenda to begin with, but I'd like to pull that. And But first, I would like to ask Rose um, a clarification question. And, Please and proceed. That would be, uh, in a previous discussion I had this morning with uh, Attorney Adams, he explained to me that um, later on in the agenda, items number 6.3 and 6.9, um, if those were to be uh, passed, uh, accepted and passed as they are, that um, nothing could be done with those specific resolutions until 3.16 was dealt with. Do you concur with that? 
Attorney Adams discussed this briefly with me um, today and so your question and I just want to put this in layman's terms so that we all understand is relating to um, the um, flat fee approach that that um, Public Works is intending to take as far as assessments or fee per footage um, approach and um, you're just wondering if 3.16 conflicts with either 6.3 and 6.9 is that correct? No, what, what's, what, what I would like to do, the goal of mine is to eliminate special assessments mm -hmm. for roads altogether and if I um, take 3.6 I would like to refer that to Committee of the Whole because I think there is a substantial discussion that needs to be made um, and, and bring all the other aldermen up to speed as to the history of special assessments, um, you know, what we've gone on, our current funding sources for roads and, and so on and so forth and, and the reasons why I believe that it's not a fair or equitable way to fund roads in the future. So what I want to do is um, send that to the Committee of the Whole and but knowing that if 6.3 and 6.9 are passed that that in fact does not give us the right to assess without first dealing with six point or with 3.16 and that's the way it was explained to me by Attorney Adams. Right and I believe Attorney Adams position is that these are not mutually exclusive that you can refer 3.16 to Committee of the Whole and still um, pass 6.3 and 6.9 and there will be no action taken on assessments if those are, are passed until 3.16 is dealt with. Well, I would ver I would um, direct that question, to Mr. Beeble. Um, is it? I mean, I guess it would depend on what DPW's position would be as to moving forward um, with 6.3 and 6.9. David's coming to the front because <coughs> I I can't make those promises. Yeah, our, our, our position is we're going to wait until the council makes a decision one way or the other, but we need to at least have that document ready to go. Um, without that document, if we don't have it ready to go, if you make a decision to pass or not to pass, the... Um, so the document that you're referring to is 6.3 and 6.9? Correct. But <coughs> three, three point, the, the one that authorizes the preliminary assessments to be start the hearing process and, and submit that, is basically following the ordinance as it is today. So okay. if, if the decision at some point is not to assess for roads, we would not proceed with that. But if the council so desires to continue street assessments, we need that document so that we can start publishing the hearing and publishing the preliminary assessment notices. Okay. So, so yeah, we, 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 it, 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 they kind of all go together as part of the decision process. We're just trying to make sure that one way or the other that it doesn't delay our ability to get the project done. And, and we're going out to bids this week. It's a two-week process for contractors to bid. <coughs> we open bids, come back to council with them. So there, it, it, it will be about, I would say, about anywhere from a three to four-week process, then that resolution, of the preliminary assessment, then we will be ready to move on it. Okay, so you're not going to unilaterally just go off and start sending out assessments? No, even we, that's, okay. that's true. Thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, so then what I would like to do is I would like to pull um, 3.16 and, uh, or I, I guess I would like um, to have that referred to Committee of the Whole. Second. Okay, 3.16 then, um, the Chair will refer that to the Committee of the Whole, so that would dispense with item 3.16. And then just for clarification, 6.3 the way and 6.9 the way it was, um, one is a resolution and one is a general ordinance and it refers to a schedule of how we would, uh, if we were to assess what the fee schedule would be and how we would do that. So that's, they're basically the same thing and that's what that is. Okay, we'll address those later in the agenda. Right now we're talking, you. ta you're welcome. Items 3.2 through 3.17 minus uh, 3.16. Is there any discussion? Any of the other items before us? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage?
15 ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to reports of officers. Item 4.1 is, is RO number 247 of 1617 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 44 of 1617 by Alderperson Bellinger and Wolf, and RO number 235 of 1617 by the City Clerk for a petition for direct annexation by unanimous approval for the property located in the town of Sheboygan at 3009 North 15th Street and recommends that the ordinance be approved. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this property um, is located like on 15th Street. For those of you familiar with Manning's Irish Pub, it's directly to the south of that. This gentleman, uh, the property owner, uh, came to the plan commission and petitioned. Uh, apparently, he's got a well that's gone bad and would like to annex into the city uh, for the access to the city water. So that's the reason behind that. And with that, I would move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. City Administrator. Yeah, requesting a clarification. As part of the motion, uh, does it include uh, requesting the property owner to reimburse the city for uh, state statute required payments to the town of Sheboygan for five years. Yes, that was that was addressed at, at the meeting, and um, it's an unfortunate um, uh, ordinance or state statute that uh, that, this, that the uh, towns put in place to uh, try to limit annexation. But the homeowner or the property owner did agree to um, take care of that. Okay, the motion is before us. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Items uh, 4.2 through four and 4.3 will lie over till <coughs> April 5th. <coughs> Items uh, 4.4 through 4.12 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 5.1 through 5.10 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, Item 6.1 is RC number 353 of 1617 by the Law and Licensing Committee. Tumor is referred RO number 223 of 1617 by the City Clerk, submitting various license applications. It recommends denying taxi cab driver license application 1142 based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, his record as a repeat law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. All the person holds you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I ask that the report of committee be uh, accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Oscar Berenda Fernandez here? Uh, he was invited to our committee on two different occasions and did not show up to explain his very extensive record. So the committee all voted to deny his license. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 359 of 1617 by the Law and Licensing Committee to whom vote to who voted to recommend to the Common Council to grant alcohol beverage license number 2317 for Parker John's Barbecue and Pizza. Uh, an extension until June 12th of 2017 to open their business. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, they came before us and they're not quite finished with the building and we have given them the six month period which is about to expire. So we have given them an extension a little longer than they've requested. But I um, think it's gonna be a, a great restaurant when it's open so we ask that you all uh, agree. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Alderperson Boren. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alderman Holshue, is that the establishment that's going up where the Mucky Duck used to be? It certainly is. Thank you. Any other discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 360 of 1617 by Public Works, to whom was referred resolution number 188 of 1617 by Alderperson Bellinger, Bitters, and Boren, pursuant to section 110-37, parentheses 3, of the Sheboygan Municipal Code, establishing a schedule of uh, flat uh, fees per foot to be levied against assessments for street improvements for the year 2017 and recommends that the attached substitute resolution be passed. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, with uh, Assistant City Attorney uh, uh, Rose Silva Simon, um, or Simon Silva, I'm sorry, excuse me, I would like to take 6.3 and 6.9 uh, together. I was told from Attorney Adams that I could take these together. You can include those in your motion. Okay. Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, so 6.3, I would like to accept, adopt, and pass a substitute resolution, and 6.9, accept, and adopt, and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Jose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I actually agree with Alderman Belger. So this it seems like this will be a fairer way to do this. I do have one question. Um, the people that were assessed the last year or two that paid some pretty heavy assessments for the street route. Were, were, are they going to be given any break in this, or are they going to immediately start paying what everybody paid? Or, or if, if that's the case, could we amend this to, um, to um, the first few years, give them a kind of a break because they've all paid huge assessments? Um, all the person, Jose, that would be a discussion that we should have at the committee the whole meeting when we address the earlier document and decide how we want to implement um, stopping assessments if that's what we decide to do. Is there any other discussion? Yes. Um, I guess I would like to... Uh, I would like to make a motion to um, grant those those people that paid assessments the last year to some kind of compensation. I don't believe that's germane to this issue. No. So we really can't address that uh, as part of these two documents. Is there any other discussion? Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my only question was. Uh, if there could be some clarity on exactly if there's what the change is from what we've done in the past to what's being uh, voted on right now. David, did you want to? David Beeble will come forward. In terms of street assessments, what we've done in the past is we've waited till the bids come in look at what the costs were of the actual bids of this year, and then we would recalculate this, the street assessments based on those costs of bids. What we're doing with this proposal is looking at last year's costs as well as projecting and coming up with a, a, a basically a rate. And it's, it's based on engineering and construction bids, but what we're trying to do is get that rate published in well in advance <coughs> instead of waiting for actual costs every year. So it's, it's, it's still, the, the rate is very similar to what it was last year. In fact, it, it's based on last year's cost with a little bit of inflation added to it. So it, it's, if we're going to continue to assess, this will be an established rate, and what we can do is get that information to residents much earlier so that we're able to give them advance notice on these street projects so they can plan accordingly for the, for the finances of this. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, David, if you just could stay there and just, you know, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the past, isn't this an effort to streamline the process? And in the past, wasn't it the fact that we, 
We estimated what, the, what we thought they were, they were going to be. We estimated high. We sent out letters. And when the people got the letters and when they were through with their shell shock and they, the projects went through and they went through the, you know, the process, the job would get let, things would go through. You would get all the costing on the job. The job would then come back. You would go back and look and say, what did it actually cost? Then a final letter would go out, and that would be the bill. And, and, and so this is right. elite, it's streamlining, <laughs> cutting it down, Correct. and eliminating that process. And so we're going to have a published set of, of fees based on previous years and projected on oil pricing and you know all sorts of other things that would be taken into account. Correct. Correct. And, We're going to take all those factors mm -hmm. involved, and you're right. And that's really what this is about: is streamlining the process, especially now with the additional funding that we're getting to really put an emphasis on fixing the infrastructure in our, our street network. With that, that's that's added. You know, we're tripling the size of the program, and for our engineering department and, and getting this work out, the assessment process as it currently is today is quite burdensome because we do have the, we send out preliminary assessment, and that preliminary assessment is based on an estimate. Then we'll have a hearing. We'll, the public that has the streets that are identified that are, that are in this preliminary resolution for street assessments, they will all be invited to council to, to you know, have a hearing on that and go through those costs. Then we go into the construction season, we get the actual cost, and then after the project's done, we recalculate and send out the final bill. What we're trying to do is, this is the established rate, this is what your cost is, and it's not going to change. So there's some certainty in it, and it gets to the, the public basically some, some ability to plan accordingly. Right now, there's some uncertainty in it, and that, that causes some confusion as well through this process. Thank you. All the prisoner item and thank you, Mayor. David, what happens if the, the costs go down and we have this flat fee established? Does, does it, is there a mechanism within that resolution that says you're going to get the lower cost, or is it just information? But the the way the assessments work, we don't charge the resident the full cost of the job. We, we the way the way the ordinance is set now, the residents pay 50 percent of the cost of the street improvement. And then that 50% is split between each side. So one side of the street, your property, you pay, basically it boils down to you pay 25%, your neighbor across the street pays 25%, that's the 50%, and the city picks up the additional cost. And so the, the overall cost um, of the cost of the project, the property owner's cost is much more reduced than the overall cost of the project. So in terms of adjusting, they're still getting a reduced price at that 25%. So we don't anticipate much fluctuation from year to year with this new flat rate. Thank you. Okay, and I understand it, but in 2019, uh, things change and, and the cost of oil, the cost of doing things comes down. Are we going to be... Um, are, is this resolution with it's in place with these numbers? Is that going to say that's the flat fee? Nope. That's Every year we're going to be coming with a uh, new resolution, a new resolution establishing the, the flat fee rates for the upcoming <coughs> construction season. Okay, our, our goal is going to be when we have the flat rates is already this fall, ideally in September, October at the latest as part of the budget process, these are going to be the flat rates for 2018. So everybody that has a street improvement project for 2018 will already know their, their assessment rate this September. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, when I talked to you earlier today, Mayor, you mentioned something, you had an idea about uh, an additional corner lock credit or something like that. Well, you want we, to bring we that brought up? that up at the Public Works Committee meeting. It seems like um, several of the people that uh, we had at the hearings were people who had lo the long side of their lots being paved. And if we would find a way to give them at least part of that, that corner credit that they could get eventually when the other side would be paved, uh, when they do have the long side, I think that will alleviate some of our issues with the residents. So I think that needs uh, to be looked at. When, when would be, David, when would be an appropriate time to look at that? Uh, and that's at the committee of the whole. We're borderline not related to what we have on the agenda. Maybe that would be something that you'd want to add to the discussion for committee of the whole. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Thank you, David. 
Uh, will the clerk please call the roll for passage on 3.6 and 3.9? 6.3 oh. and 6.9. 6.3 and 6.9. Close. <laughs> Dyslexia. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> 14 eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is RC number 361 of 1617 mm -hmm. by the Finance Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 197 of 1617 by Alder Part Person Wolf, Donahue, Bellinger, and Schneider, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget <laughs> to establish estimated revenue and appropriation for contracted services for park facilities and street improvements in the community uh, development block grant funds. Recommends that the resolution be passed. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. See no discussion. Will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> 14 eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.5 is RC number 362 of 1617 by the Public Protection and Safety Committee, whom is referred resolution number 199 of 1617 by Alderperson Thiel, authorizing entering into a contract for architectural engineering services associated with <coughs> the reconstruction of fire station number two roof structure and recommends the resolution be passed. Alderperson Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. We have a motion on the floor. <coughs> Is there any discussion? <coughs> Got it. What? No, they were just saying who seconded it. Yep. We have a, a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nice. Motion passes. Item 6.7 is RC number 365 of 1617 by the Finance Committee, whom was referred resolution number 212 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget to establish an appropriation in it for an advance of funds to the Redevelopment Authority for land acquisition. The funds will be repaid with interest and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fourteen ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item six point. Eight is RC number 366 of 1617 by the Finance Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 213 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget to establish an appropriation for development loan to the Founders Club and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a, a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? <coughs> Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? <coughs> 14 eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.10 is RC number 371 of 1617 by the Finance Committee, to whom is referred a, a copy of General Ordinance number 44 of 1617 by Alderperson Bellinger and Wolf, and a copy of RO number 235 of 1617 by the City Clerk, annexing territory to the City of Sheboygan. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. 
I make a motion, it's action? There really isn't any because we've already passed it, so it's a copy of. Okay. So we can just accept that. Just accept it. Please accept. accept. File. File. Okay, we have a motion to accept and file. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. All those in favor of uh, accepting and filing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Under matters laid over, 7.1 is RO number 229 of 1617 by the City Planning Commission to whom is referred General Ordinance number 41 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue, Wolf, Thiel, Bellinger, and Holshue for an ordinance re Healing and recreating section 15.915 of the city zoning ordinance as so as to remove the duties of the housing rehabilitation loan program from the historic preservation commission and recommends that the ordinance be passed alderperson bellinger thank you mayor i move to accept and file and pass the ordinance second thank you for that motion and support is there any discussion seeing none please call the roll <coughs> 15 eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.2 is resolution, resolution number 211 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing entering into a contract for the purchase of delivery of 40 concrete planters for the downtown businesses in the, in the A Street District Corridor. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes, two no's, and one not present. Hmm. Here, I voted. Tan <laughs> Tanny. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'll change it tomorrow. Did you mean to vote yes? I did vote yes. Okay. <laughs> Checked out already. Thank you. <laughs> okay, motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other yeah, matters received yay. after the agenda was published. Assistant <laughs> City Attorney. The first is resolution number 232-16-17 by Alderperson Bellinger, a resolution authorizing entering into contract with display sales to purchase downtown Christmas decorations. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Resolution number 233-16-17 by Alderperson Wolf, a resolution authorizing accepting a grant from the Tony Hawk Foundation in the amount of $5,000 to be used towards the skate park project. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. Resolution number 234-16-17 by Alderperson Wolf. Uh, resolution to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget for salaries and benefits in the City Clerk Department. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. Uh, RO number 261-16-17 by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2017, June 30th, 2017, <coughs> and June 30th, 2018. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time this evening.